Ahoy and welcome to Titanic Talkline. I am Alexia, per usual, that never changes. And this week I am joined by a now good friend of mine who we've been communicating back and forth for such a long time. Mike, how are you? I'm good. Finally, uh, glad to finally have the interview. Like, it was a bit oh. first, really. It did. I'm so sorry to give listeners a small background. I think <laughs> it was like you had a, t- you got COVID and then yeah. I had a tech issue and then you had a conflict and then I got sick. Yeah, it was like, yeah, like we started April or something. Then first you had a researching conflict. Uh-huh. Then I forgot because I got COVID. Uh, mm-hmm. Then I think I forgot another time. And then because I am very good with dates, I was also <laughs> late today. And then you blew your voice out. Yeah, I got, I, it's funny, I, w- I didn't have COVID, but people thought that I did, but every once in a while I get like an in- insane allergic reaction where I cough so mm-hmm. much, it just blows the voice out. And I'm like, well, that's rude. I mean, you know, of course, true, once it's I, gone. <laughs> I was kind of getting worried because there were like a solid two months, I think, between when it happened and when we finally talked today. So I was, like, so I was like, surely she ain't dead. <laughs> Oh gosh, yeah, no, it's it's so it, yeah, and again, when I do this thing with my voice, you know, I always hope it'll come back in like a month, like not a month, like a week or so. It yeah. always inevitably takes like six to eight weeks in in when it happens to me, so it is always this stupid adventure that goes on way longer than it needs to. Yeah, uh, well, yeah it was yeah, like it's 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 a fun gimmick, I suppose, that you have a cursed interview, but it was like holy shit, like I think <laughs> like I have the mail in front of me. I think we started chatting in April. It was a while ago. Uh, and it's see. just been what's that book series? A series of unfortunate events. It's yeah. A bit a bit like that. Yeah, that, no, it wasn't April, but the first um mail I have was in the middle of June for a interview in the end of July. That's right. And now we are almost in December, so it took a good mm. no, nearly took half a year. That's it. Jesus. My god. It's all <laughs> This was longer than the Titanic existed, and I think that's yeah. kind of upsetting in its own way. I mean, but I, th- I think if we rescheduled a few more times, we would have had the build period of the complete Titanic before we finally got to it. I think so. I think if I, if we kept on getting it any longer, I could have actively scheduled it for April 14th. Yeah, we were talking about like you wanted to do it um, next year, but I was like, um, we have already put it off. That, that I know. It would have, yeah, I get- like, it would have been a year. I know. I just, I do batch recording for the interviews. I I don't really do them. I think that if I put an episode out more than once a, no, that's a lie. If I put it out more than once a week, I might do more frequent batch recordings, but I would still do Mm -hmm. them in groups. Um, And it's not to say that it's like, oh, it's such an inconvenience, but it is a little bit easier to kind of schedule, you know, 10 interviews at a time True. and just kind of have them all done. Uh, And, you know, because I I, I like to do minimal editing on my interviews as well, because I don't, you know, I don't need my final. Yeah, I don't need the the final product I'm turning out is not meant to be polished. It's meant to be conversations between people, and conversations are weird. You know, they yeah. you know, it, humans it, are weird, so yeah. it's it fits exactly. Now. I mean, humans are 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 still obsessed with a ship that none of us have ever seen. Hundred ten yeah. years later, so I mean, like that says a lot. Then again, I like pirates, so I'm obsessed with a lot of ships I've never seen. I think that's cool. I'll ad- I'll admit that I I don't have as vast of an overall maritime history as I feel like I should, um, and it's not not that I'm thinking like oh I'm a negligent person, but more just you know like I've looked into Titanic enough where it feels as though maybe I should know a little bit like what are outside of Titanic for people who don't really know anything about maritime history, what are a couple like not big ticket wrecks, but wrecks that really when you think about it did a lot for how things are now in the same way that, you know, Titanic was a big sensation and it involved a lot of safety overhauls and what have you. What are some yeah. wrecks that people really should know about because they're far more impactful than people really think? Well, I'm far from a pro as well. Like I'm well, you're, just, in, you're interested. <laughs> yeah. I'm obvious, but like, um, well, it's more like culture. Yeah, rather than like, mm-hmm. I know which ships are big in culture. I know yeah. to a lesser extent, the Lucinia and that's sunk in the first world war or something. That's mm-hmm. the biggest we still have today because it um, sailed onto a mine, I believe. But like with pirate ships, like I believe the um, Queen Anne's Revenge from Blackbeard is some still sunken somewhere. Um, over in Holland, we have a few um, uh, trade ships from the Dutch East India Company rebuilt. So oh. you can check that. And of course, the most infamous um, 
ghost ship that exists comes from the Dutch, the Flying Dutchman. You know what's really funny is that up until now, even though it is called the Flying Dutchman, I just hadn't mm-hmm. considered that it was Dutch. I that seems so <laughs> stupid. Why? Yeah, of course, it's Dutch. Yeah, you don't think about it too much because it's such a well, it's a worldwide thing. Like if you see a ghost ship with red sails, you don't think first. Oh yeah, right. They come from the Netherlands. No, you. <laughs> oh shit, that's a ghost ship. Uh, help. See, yeah. To be fair, I don't think if it landed in my front lawn, I'd be like, "Excuse me, your port of origin is." I think it would just be more of a. Yeah. Although I would hope for them that they would land in your front lawn, not because I want any mishap on you, but their curses that they can't leave the sea. They basically uh... they um, sailed away on a Christian holiday. And they started floating, but they can never come down again. So That's like the same with, um, I don't know if you watched the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. I've, I've seen, I know, I've seen the first one. I've seen a couple of the sequels, but it's in been a long time. And the third one, you have that huge guy with like the tentacle beard, right? Yeah, Davy Jones. I, I, yeah, Davy Jones. I have him somewhere. I have a pirate ship standing behind me. So uh, this ship. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. And the reason, I'm not like Davy Jones is kind of like the Grim Reaper, but the sea version. Yeah. But the curse of him that he can only step in land once every 10 years is based on the Flying Dutchman that can't reach land at all. Mm -hmm. So you only see them at sea, but where they give letters to their uh, loved ones, who of course already dead as well. Interesting. So I think if you would see them in your back garden, you would be pretty, they would be pretty happy because it will mean the curse is broken that's true i will also say though i don't live myself near the ocean but the state that i live on does border the ocean so they could have just gotten a little lost on the way to the water true <laughs> but yeah <laughs> i think i think they would be ecstatic with that yeah that's, that's like true. that's one of the myths i like like same with uh it's a bit of a uh of tension but with johnny cash with ghost rides in the sky i'm, I'm finding it interesting that. that's a country song but it's like right, with, right, right. People with horses driving through air. It's so interesting that they are trapped somewhere forever. They have to travel. I don't know. It's just an interesting myth to me. It's kind of... Yeah, it's not a super common one, but I mean, you do hear it. I think every culture has some sort of myth uh, that ends and and they were, you know, cursed, banished to wander the earth forever, never able to escape. There's there's, there's a lot of variations on that one. And because it's such an interesting um, for me then, such an interesting punishment because well it lasts forever. Yeah. It's, they just keep roaming and roaming. And in a way it's kinda um appealing as well if you romanticize it because you get to travel forever. Mm-hmm. But yeah, when would it eventually it will suck because you can't reach home anymore? Well, that is a fair point. Yeah. Eventually the novelty might wear off and it might just be like, ah shit. Yeah. But then again, I have the complete opposite because I have struggled with agoraphobia for a while. So I, on the other hand, have an issue with leaving home. Like, that's yeah. the she's about. So that's a nice contrast as well. Like, they can never go home, and I have to struggle. And for a while, I couldn't go anywhere except home. So maybe that's a interesting dynamic as well, why it intrigues me so much, because it's literally the polar opposite from my condition. I can see that. I, it is always interesting to literally consider the opposite of whatever you have. Like if yeah. if you don't have any anxiety, which I I have anxiety coming out of my yeah. ears, right? Yes, but it's like I can't. I I am, I am literally unable to imagine what it must be like to not have anxiety. I yeah. just I I cannot imagine what that's like, and it's it is fascinating in a way because you're just, it it makes you wonder like what must that be like? You know, yeah. and the, I had it for I have got an anxiety kind of recently so mm-hmm. before that i used to um fight kickboxing matches for example so i do have the two extremes so it's, it's an interesting balance and i think that's what at least pulls me to the, the, the that's part of the sea like it's such an extreme and especially now that with the new current condition it, it gives it an extra layer right where does for you where does titanic play into it the Titanic um, isn't a myth. Ob- I mean, obviously, there's myths surrounding it, but unlike you know the Flying Dutchman, which is a myth or you know whatever yeah. the case may be, you know this is a real thing. Yeah, but there it's it still has even if it's not uh, if even if it's real, it's a legend, same as with the Flying Dutchman. And True. I remember th- there are like three Titanic children movies, I believe, and <laughs> the animated ones. Yeah, and I read that they <laughs> suck. 
like I was scrolling past the forum and they were like, these movies suck. And I was like, uh, but that's how I got into them. And I enjoyed them. Like, I wasn't aware how much they were hated, but there was like uh, the one with the mouse that plays soccer, I believe, and the giant octopus that shuts them back together. <laughs> that's, the, that's the way how I started it. <laughs> I haven't seen the movies, but a friend of mine sent me a clip from one of them, which is, again, we saw it in the English version, w- version, yeah. version, where um, in the course of about four seconds, a, uh, a woman mouse folds the same sweater three times. Uh, a cat eats the, pr- tries to eat the child mouse and is thwarted by a dog who then immediately starts rapping. I think I, th- this was, was the one who was rapping. Like that's I believe is another movie, but okay. the funny thing is, I I on the other hand I haven't watched the camera movie yet because I just haven't gotten to it. Ah. Like the silver movies, they were my entrance to it, and I was like, wow, it's a pretty cool story with the big ship and it changes, and then people work together and bring it back. Mm-hmm. That's a cool myth. Yeah. And well, I like as I said, as a person who enjoys pirates and shit, there's something majestic about big ships, and I like history in yeah. general. So from there on it started, and the best um, history is the one with the best stories. And you can make a whole lot of stories about it, because well, you have 3,000 people there. So with all the yeah, people that were there, and how it influenced like the people who died, and what it could have been. And there's lots of interesting media behind it, so that circles it all back. Like, I've watched the main Titanic movies, for instance, I have seen... A movie about um, a woman in the the Britannic had a movie too, I believe. It's like a real life movie about the Britannic, which uh, I believe that I I, I don't. Uh, mm, give me a second. I'm gonna I'm gonna Google that. Pretend I knew it all the time. <laughs> uh, yes, called Britannic. It is two thousand. Yeah. It is from the year two thousand. Um. Uh, I that I I don't recognize any of these people. Nah, it's and... probably like the same with like after Jaws came out, there came a lot of movies with scary bear chasing people and scary dogs. So it's the same principle. Titanic did well, so we grabbed that other ship and tell a drama about that. But the woman uh, who's the main character in that, she, for instance, um, Amanda Ryan. Yeah, she has been on at least Titanic and Britannic, and um, maybe even on the Olympic when that had a um, collision. Which uh, and they, it got parts from Titanic, which delayed the Titanic and stuff. And so people believe she was cursed because, well, you were there when the Olympic were into about, something. Are you talking about Violet Jessup? I think. Yeah, sorry. The um, the character that we were talking about in the movie Britannic um, yeah. is named Vera Campbell. I think that's a fake yeah. person because it says, uh, the plot of the movie says, a British female spy is ordered to monitor suspected German saboteurs on board the Titanic sister ship, the Britannic, during World War One. Yeah. During the voyage, she becomes infatuated with the ship's chaplain, but is shocked to discover that he is one of the German agents he is supposed to be tracking. Yeah, and I believe he, uh, in what may be the worst CGI I've seen, he dies by... Uh, but unlike the Titanic, with the Britannic, the uh, engines keep going, so his <gasps> rowboat comes down and it is... Boom. Great. Yeah. That sounds great. <laughs> yeah, not, not the fun way to go, I suppose. Yeah, no. I believe, um, I'm not sure if it's her or if it's another woman aboard the ship. It's been a while since I watched the movie. But um, basically, her plot is she has been on all three. She was there when... The, oh, uh, the so she must be She something. must be based off of the woman. I, sorry, I was talking about a real-life passenger, Violet Jessup, who was on all three ships. She must be based on her. It, it might be based on her, yeah. But, like, Neat. like, that's an interesting myth, too. Like, how the hell do you get to all three ships when they run into something? And... Uh, yeah, so that's what stood out for me. And like, uh, if you read more about like all the ways that um, like a lot of dominoes fell at exactly the right spots to make the Titanic sink. Right. Like I read, I read some rumors about that there was a fire w- which weakened the hull where the uh, in the coal bunker. Was. Yeah. Or um, for instance, there was a book about it that I read, and that there was a. Uh, myth about um, if you saw a uh, engine worker who shoved coal in it, mm-hmm. that um, your sh- ship is cursed that you would sink, and then there in the book it happens. Huh. I believe there was some. Um, I read something about uh, 
a woman having a law firm which was started by a survivor of the Titanic. Like, it's there's the Titanic itself is kind of interesting, but I always, um, I never watched the main movies, so I always was intrigued about stories around it. People can make right. a lot of interesting stories around it. Like, yeah, like, it's, sometimes it's interesting to read about actual people still before the sample, the guy that stood in the crow's nest, what happened to him. That, well, Frederick Fleet. Yeah, Frederick Fleet, and Fleet said he had a pretty shit life after, like, that trauma. It was a sad-ass life, like, just, yep. just wrought with tragedy. Yeah, and I was like, I believe there was some a child or something that survived it, and um, he became afraid of the trains or the church bell, one of the two, because of the trauma. Mm -hmm. So there's like, that's kind of what pulled me in. So it was yeah. like everything that happened around it. And that's mm -hmm. when I found the subreddit and was like, yeah, interesting. Right. There are a lot of stories like that. And I know that some of the ones that stick out to me too are how um, second officer Charles Lightoller, who is the um, the most senior surviving officer. So, you know, yeah. man of the sea, yeah. um, reportedly could never have, take a bath afterwards because, yeah. you know, just I mean, I get it. Being submerged in ice cold water over and over and over again, and was, I, was I don't. Was the guy that refused to turn a boat around as well, or was that someone else? Um, according to testimony mythology, that would be Fifth Officer Low, but that oh. is, you know, that is contested as well. Like, there's a. <clears throat> Here's the thing about a lot of the testimony. I mean. Like we were just talking about like people are interesting people are also contradictory and it doesn't mean that they're lying it just means that especially when you're dealing with like can you imagine witnessing the titanic going down and then someone being like putting a microphone in your face being sir sir tell me everything that happened what was it like sir sir hello sir details yeah, would, what happened well, what happened right and people more more, more um inter probably the chance were bigger that it would be ma'am ma'am what happened because well, well what so, I, right what but i was meaning you specifically yeah. but it would yeah. be like you know you just got off this massive tragedy and people are not only asking you questions but they want a story so they're asking you questions like how did he die where is the captain what happened did you see anything and it's like uh yeah i saw 1500 people die uh witnessed a couple of near murders uh, yeah. A bunch of women got made into widows today. What in the hell do you want me to say? It's, it's, yeah. it's, and then I think now that I'm getting into it more, I'm hearing like, did you hear that this, um, this survivor said this thing and this contradicts what this person says? Like, I know that there's some testimony now where some people are saying, I can't remember who, but they're saying that quartermaster Hitchens, um, initially panicked when Murdoch gave the order to, um, give the heart of starboard and initially turned the wrong way. But, and, you know, right and then there's, there. right, which is like, oh, sure, I mean, possible, but is it likely? I don't know. But then, you, of course, you have other testimony who's like, no, Me, Hitchens the, the, heard the order and did what he was told. Yeah, and also, like, um, from when I watched the film, like, uh -huh. I have watched the film, but of course, I have watched the scene of, with the iceberg. Yeah. Like, they didn't tell the guy who was at the helm that there was an iceberg. Right. Well, he can't see. Uh, the guy calls, it was uh -huh. like, iceberg, and then, yeah, understood starboard now like yep. he doesn't know why so it would be odd that he would be spooked by it because well he doesn't know why he have to go to starboard just he has to go right he, he might have even been half asleep steering the ship 10 seconds ago because nothing was happening i'm yeah. not trying to this is not meant to be blameful but it's like until then nothing was going wrong yeah but and then this other time like a lot of things were going wrong like for instance like i read somewhere like that there would have been a bigger chance that they would have survived if they hit it head on because that way the front foot crumple which you would only have four mm -hmm. compartments ruptured or also that possible. Um, i believe the um, spy glasses the looking uh, binoculars uh, yeah it would they be would, the um, american english term yeah they wouldn't be uh yeah, spy glasses one that's right they weren't available ah, yes. on the night of the well, they uh, didn't have them on board yeah but they were like in a locked cabin and the person had locked it and when they that's... changed guards they and that's another, speaking of contrasting testimony, there's some people who are saying that the, they were locked up and that the person with the key never made it on board. And then there's some people who say that the binoculars themselves just plain ass didn't make it on board. And it's one yeah. of these things where there's a lot of contradicting detail testimony, which I'm like, yeah. I'm not saying it's unimportant, but I also personally, and this is me, if you want to come, listeners, if you're going to come yell at someone, come yell at me. I don't <laughs> care. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Like, at the end of the day, does it matter why they didn't have the binoculars? The point is they didn't have the binoculars. Yeah, but then, for instance, like, if they would have had the binoculars, 
would they have spotted it? I don't think so. I've made this no. argument before, and my argument is, have you ever used binoculars in the dark? They're not oh. night vision goggles. <laughs> No, but I believe that the way it is, like, they didn't see the iceberg itself. First, they saw, like, a rimpling or something for the water. So I'm not sure what they were looking for, but they're probably... And that's the other thing. That they would have seen it earlier. Maybe I I personally, again, I have, I have been an idiot when I was a kid when we had, yeah. like, binoculars and I put them up to my eyes in the dark. Like, yeah. I can see, and it's like, no, you cannot see the tree line. It is still dark outside. But I'm you're... Here. <laughs> Sure. I mean, it's but I could be wrong. This, like I said, these are all my opinions. Yeah, I wasn't that's, there. But that's the fun part for me of because I don't know. <laughs> I can think about like what would have happened if that would have happened. Like I yes. have no clue. But yeah. like, like and yeah, there's lots of misinformation around. Like, for instance, I believe for a while that the captain wasn't fair, had it done a good job at that voyage because his name got kind of slaughtered because he sunk the. A sinkable ship, but turns out I believe that that was fake as well. There's there was a lot going on around Captain Smith because the thing of the matter is is that when a pi- when a plane goes down, you all blame the pilot. Yeah. When the ship goes down, everyone blames the captain. And I well, do especially I... It's such a seasoned captain because it was like oh it's yeah, the pilot thingy like he was yeah, their, was uh, Tom Brady, so to say. He was like the flagship captain, you know, yeah. Mr. We're looking at you as an example. And I am sure that, you know, at the in the grand scheme of things, because he was the captain, I'm sure he bears some responsibility in there. I just yeah. don't know exactly what it is. Like, should he have probably not given the orders to sail on the ice? Absolutely. That's, yeah, that's, enough. But that's, that's a pretty obvious like, one. Exactly. That's and that's hindsight. And also, how many ships do you know that were that did hit an iceberg or sink? Like that was apparently pretty rare as well. And then there's the whole matter with the California could have come in and saved people, but the the thingies were turned off because they had like yep. a loud blast with the headphone before. Which well, I like as well. Like when I'm listening to music and it goes to the song, it is <laughs> like you go oh, like I can understand that you would throw your headphones off. Well, it's not only that, but unlike now, when you can basically have, like, 24-7 call centers and stuff, they had, like, radio hours. So at a certain yeah. point, like, you're off duty. You don't have to be sitting there anymore. Yeah, And I, I totally understand why like... you wouldn't. Yeah, like, my shift is done, dude. And my ship is not in peril, so I'm going to bed. Yeah, and but the Titanic guy like, who turned off a bit, he already had a shit night as well because he had yep. to send a lot of messages because yep. uh, the passengers had a lot of things to say, which they no doubt thought they were important. It's really important to let everybody know that you wore your green gown to dinner. Yeah. If you and don't then, let everyone know, it may as well not have happened. Yeah, and the blue emeralds fitted it very well, so that has to be known for the next fashion season. Yeah, it looked way better than when Marjorie wore that blue necklace, which was clashing with that hat. Yeah, I mean, I like the big hats, but like... <laughs> Some of like, them are it's insane. Good. I mean, probably, but like, <laughs> it's the fun thing, like, same with fa- ghost fashion as well, like, because I... In a way, it's good that I don't know a lot about it because mm-hmm. that lets the fancy run rampant. Like, same with fashion. I don't know a lot about fashion, so I just see big hat and then if it matches with the rest, eh, I don't care. Sure. So that's, for me, that's like, because I don't know about it, you can have the myth, which in a way makes it more interesting. That's like, a valid point. Like, I enjoy, like, reading about and, like, um, I've watched a YouTube channel for a while that's talked about sunken ships. I remember the Titanic and the Edmund Fitzgerald is a, a big one. Aha, my two favorite wrecks. Yeah, well, I I didn't know much about it, but um, there's a song about it from Gordon Lightfoot. I love that song so much. I think I'm the only person in the world that might torture a bar with a karaoke rendition of that. Like, hey, I you're mean, all having a good time. Want to hear a slow song about a ship that went down? Here you go. I mean, I'm not much of a singer. I know that, but... <laughs> It's a good song. Any of I my listeners. A musician. Hey, he's showing me a really cool bass. I love the color. Yeah. Thank you. I, uh, call it, I call it the Midnight Express. See, that's a little sticker. I dig it. I love it. Yeah. I, I do more and more singing, but I re- that's a great... Speaking of like pretty iconic songs, obviously, I mean, if, even if you yeah. haven't seen James Cameron's Titanic film, you've, I'm sure, heard My Heart Will Go On at least once. But, yeah, um, well, though I can't say like um, with the music, I'm a Doesn't huge matter. Fan. Like you can see uh, my background, you can see motor. Yeah, yeah, 
Well, the, the point I was making was going to make was that, you know, having having a, a pretty iconic song attached to something helps increase visibility. Because in the same way, like I will, Jesus, I'll fully admit that I didn't know much about the, the fits, but yeah. I was, I don't know where I was. I was driving somewhere with my dad and I was explaining Spotify to him. Yeah. And he was like, so you can look up any song? And I was like, any song? And he was like, well, I want to show you a song. And he played The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. I'd never heard it before. And I was just like, what is this? I mean, this is sea a great shanty song. Great in general, so. I do like a sea shanty. And I do like how the Gordon Lightfoot song, it has, it's not a, an outright she shant. Nope. She, no. Jesus, sea shanty. It is yeah. not an outright sea shanty, it's, but it has some elements. Yeah, it's well, both. She, it's like a country is a, is a type of folk music. Yeah, yeah, it's folk sea. sea. It's a type of folk music. It's a folk sea, yeah. sh sea shanty. It's, it's definitely of like of that kind of country soul thing. But it, I like that it was, I've heard some songs that are written about like events or disasters and they basically are like a historical paragraph set to music. But I yeah. like how his is an actual song. Well, to add on to that, like speaking of music that makes something memorable by setting a historical paragraph, a good fiction example for that is hanging right behind you. Like you have the Avatar posters. I Marvel do. Marvel would be nearly as famous without um, Leaves from the Fine. I have a Avatar: The Last Airbender scrolls behind me for my uh, yeah. for the people who can't see. I only have two of the four. I've got Fire with Zuko and I've got Air with Aang. I missed mm -hmm. uh, Toph and Fire. Katara. Fire is the best element. So Fire is the best element, and but yeah, I also but like Fire. And everyone loves Iro, but you love Iro even more because Leaves of the Fine from the Basing Say episodes. Jesus, how dare you bring up that song? <laughs> yeah, that's the same point. Oh. So you can be even more legendary, and that's added with real life elements as well because um, Mako, the first Mako. voice actor, passed away not long after. So that's yeah, how yeah. myth and legend combined with real life makes the best stories. And you're absolutely, you're right there too. And, you know, bringing up that song, which again, it, it, that is one thing I will also say about um, Leaves from the Vine is that it is a profoundly short song. It yeah. is, I think, probably maybe 30 seconds long, but it doesn't need to be longer. Yeah. I'm including the music. I'm including the music. Like the yeah. whole thing is short. It's, it's like only three things. But yeah, a song. Yeah, like but it doesn't need to be long. With, for instance, with Motorhead, like I'm a big fan of, their mm -hmm. most famous songs like Two Minutes Something. Yeah. It doesn't and need like, to be a long song. Yeah, like, it's, long songs are cool too, but like, sometimes you can bring the person quit like two minutes or like punk bands, like the Misfits, they have a one minute song. Like American Pie, the song is like 10 minutes freaking long. Yeah, but it's, 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 it repeats a lot as well. Yeah, it repeats too much. Yeah. I like the song, but it does, it, 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 it leaves yeah, you one thing, it leaves you with the whole like a good example of the opposite, um, Bruce Springsteen's Hey on Fire, that's a very good song, but it's so short that it leaves you wanting more. Right. So a, modern, a modern example for me, which is like some people may disagree, and I'm not talking about popularity, I'm talking about impact. Mm -hmm. Over the pandemic, Lil Nas X released that song Montero, and that just blew the United States apart for a hot minute. Number one, a lot of people liked it, and number two, it was like, a black gay man made a catchy song and it's like it's not even a long song it's not a five minute song it's like a two and a half minute bop and people were big pissed about it uh, it, it don't you don't need a lot to say a so you don't need to say a lot to say a lot is that the song where he does a strip tease in hell or yes is that, the, that is yeah, exactly I, that song. i haven't watched um, that song i'm not a huge rap fan like i watched it's fair. i listen to <laughs> you now then that's it but like mm -hmm. country i listen to that that's my yeah. main um, um, thing, genre mm -hmm. to switch things up when I'm not listening metal. So Billy Ray Cyrus, the old time road was very uh, good as well. So I that's just, where I know from. I just realized the other day, okay, so I'm not, I didn't grow up listening to country, even though I'm from the United States, but I do know who Billy Ray Cyrus is. And when I was little, I had this series of VHS tapes called like kids songs or something. And I think that they would do, they would have kids singing versions of, songs and for the most part i don't think they would pick you know pretty wholesome songs so they don't have to change the lyrics but i think i've now realized fully as an adult that i had learned a children's version of the chorus to achy breaky heart right. until recently because i learned that it goes um 
uh, I just don't think he'll understand. If you tell my heart, my AK breaky heart, it might blow up and kill this man. I think yeah. that's the line. Uh, in the kids' songs version, it goes, it might break down and crack like an egg. And I thought that was the real words until this year. I mean, <laughs> the way he delivers it both would work. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's it's a funny line either way. Not funny. It's a good, it, it work. You get the point either way. Yeah. I but. mean, I've known Billy Ray Cyrus since <laughs> childhood as well, but not because of Billy Ray Cyrus, but because of Hannah Montana being on the Disney Channel. It is so weird how we, you know, like, it doesn't sound like we're, we're not really talking specifically about Titanic, but it's like, no. you connect so many little dots together towards like, yeah, yeah, even if you don't, if you're too young for Billy Ray Cyrus as a musician, you know him as quote unquote Hannah Montana's dad. Yeah. It's, it's so wild how perception can shift in yeah. as as time passes and you know torches pass and what have you you know yeah that's the interesting part about stories how mm-hmm. it shapes culture like sure the, like um if i am bored or if i'm on the toilet i will it's interesting to read like something informative like mm-hmm. one real life detail that made me go oh shit was um there is like it was a two post um two picture post on reddit with how the ship lies looked when it sunk mm-hmm. and how it actually looks when it sunk. It's like only small red light right. in the darkness. And yeah, that was freaky, but most Oof. of all, like the same with the ghost stories. I like the stories and how I like culture and stuff like that. So that's where same. it comes from. That's the interesting thing. Like Titanic itself, I mean, it's interesting that it sunk to an iceberg and it's interesting and in a kind of dark way funny that's the unsinkable ship sunk the in its first voyage right but the reason we still talk about the thing today is because of its cultural impact not because of the ship itself like it was a cool as ship and it was a huge ship and modern and all that but the the queen elizabeth ii or after that huge cruise ship is called that has a lot that's that's not a bigger ship that also has a lot of modern thingies but it's fortunately for the ship it doesn't have the interesting sinking story that's right. why it, you won't meet a lot of um, people who are obsessed about that. Mm-hmm. And of course, the big movie, uh, yeah. the highest racing movie for like, I don't know how long, that helps too, of course. It definitely, it, it does. And, you know, it. it's not to say that other shipwrecks are unimportant. I don't, you know, that's not the, that's not the, the, the lesson. Is important. Yeah, the lesson here is not like, unless you have a major blockbuster movie made about you, your death is insignificant. It's like, that's not the point. It's no. just that it, it definitely helps keep something alive. And it also, it's like, it wasn't quote unquote any old ship. Like, at the time when it was built, it was a statement piece from the White Star Line. Yeah. So it was like a big deal, kind of even back then, not because they were like, this is going to be the biggest thing ever, but because they're like, this is the biggest thing we've done as a company. Like, this is, look at us. We're, yeah. we're making moves here. Yeah, and then it went so wrong. Any company had done because they were like yeah. to their back against the I want to say custard line before they made that sh- th- those ships. Right. Of course, other shipwrecks aren't unimportant. Like right. history is always important, and you must learn from it, like what we did with the compartments. Yeah. But um, stories stick. Like mm-hmm. um, if I can, like there are, for instance, like like metal. There are a lot of metal bands around. And there have been yeah. a lot of metal bands. There will be a lot of metal bands coming. There's and a lot in Amsterdam. Like it, Amsterdam's. A, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but it's like Amsterdam's actually supposed to be a pretty big hub for like metal music. Am I wrong? I'm not sure. Mostly, oh. if I heard people about Amsterdam, I'm worried them more talking about uh, hookers and uh, weed. Okay, never mind. Sorry. That's right. I think um, the Nordic countries, uh, Nel- uh, Norway, Denmark, Sweden, are more. Like, we have our metal bands too, but like, Fair. England and the Scandinavian countries are the. Scandinavia is, uh, they do kind of uh, rule the roost when it comes to metal. Music. Well, we get, I believe we get confused a lot because there's this Dutch pro wrestler I follow because, well, Dutch, Dutch. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. And Thanks. people think he's da- what, he was Danish a lot. So maybe that's where the mix up comes from. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. Anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I, I, I like thought the, I had a fun fact. Turns out I have yeah. misinformation. I mean, it's a fun fact, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I can't be wrong as well, but eh. like I there are most metal bands I know they are like Scandinavian, English or American. Fair like, enough. for instance, I like metal, I like trash metal, fast metal, mm-hmm. and like Megadeth, Slayer, Exodus. They are all very important for making that music. 
Right. They're great bands. Metal, as we know today, probably wouldn't have existed in this form without them. Sure. But they don't have a song that is ingrained in culture, so that's why they are less known, and that's why they will uh, slightly fade away slightly a bit sooner. Maybe not Slayer, because they're very fanatic fans, but... Slayer has managed to kind of cross, it, which is much rarer for metal bands, I will say, but they're yeah, one of the they ones are, that have kind are, of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. They took that yeah, step they, into the mainstream, kind of. Yeah, Lucky. and they are all very important with their music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the band, the metal band most people remember is one that has the cultural impactful song. Enter Sandman, Nothing Else Matters, one, Metallica. Yeah. Like in 100 years or something, the band we will probably remember is Metallica. That's they true. are the best trash band per se. I mean, I think so, but that's the point. <laughs> um, they are objectively the best trash band. They did a lot of innovations with like Master of Puppets, but yeah, stay that they're raining blood. But because they have Enter Sandman or One or Nothing Else Matters, it yeah. jumps out. It has that link with culture, which is why I remember it. And the same, like Titanic isn't the biggest shipwreck. That's the Lithuania thing with the um yeah in Germany. Yeah. It isn't even the biggest ship from its class. That's Britannic. Or origin yeah. book called Gigantic. But because it has the story it's sinking and all the stories around it is why we remember the Titanic and not the Gigantic to a lesser degree. Yeah, the Britannic and the Olympic kind of get just kicked by the wayside. And again, not because yeah. they were like small or anything, but as you, you know, this was, it had the story attached to it. I use, for people who don't quite get Titanic, I use an ex like an example of something that obviously never happened. I say, I tell them, it's like, imagine the opening of Disney World. Yeah. Walt Disney was there. The celebrities of the time were there. You know, it was such a big deal. Now imagine, because it's Florida, that there had been an earthquake. And half that park fell into the ocean and we yeah. lost a bunch of people. Like we lost, you know, Vivian Lee, Carrie Lewis, you know, Disney himself. Yeah. It would have been a huge freaking deal. And, you know, yeah, maybe obviously another entertainment company would have stepped in and filled the gap, but I'm pretty sure people would still be talking about like, oh my God, do you remember Disney Doomsday? Disney yeah. Doomsday, man. Oh my God. Do you remember Disney World, Disney World, Disney World? It would be this forever thing because it would have been, you know, opening week for this massive park, all the celebrities and oh shit, they're gone. Yeah. Yeah, of course. And being the first of the culture, biggest always helps. Like there were a lot of um, yeah. wrestling promotions. And for instance, um, when WrestleMania ran, that's the biggest wrestling show in the world. Mm -hmm. There was another show called Starcast. Oh. They ran head to head. And while there were some TV shenanigans of um, WWE, pushing down to get their show up and if you don't promote if you pr put their show you ain't getting WrestleMania the biggest show but why is WrestleMania so big because they also had culturally relevant people that Mr. T from the 18 that yeah. Cindy Lauper like it's a culture we kind of uh, remember things like that we all remember like I once heard um, Boston more than a feeling like I heard someone joke that that's the white people song because every, if you what song it, the, yeah, because if you put it in a bar, like everyone who's no, what yeah, song? Okay. I didn't, I didn't catch um, it. I believe um, Boston more than feeling. It's just a small town boy. Oh, uh, journey. Yeah, sorry that one. Uh, journey. Uh, don't stop believing. Yeah, yeah, sorry. That is yep. That yeah, and yeah. Sweet Caroline. Sweet Caroline's another great white person yeah. song. You know that Sweet one. Sweet Caroline also does it well in England. So yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say that's another yeah. one. <laughs> Like they are, they are excellent songs, but are they really the best songs we ever have made? No. But because it's so culturally big, like you, ju the culture will remember will remember certain things together, like mm -hmm. Titanic, like uh, "Don't Stop Believing," "Sweet Caroline," and that's why it gets immortalized. It's also interesting when I think about what um, what disasters and tragedies do get not get to, but get grip in that way. Because, you know, for example, I, I think I've brought this up a thousand times on the show, but just because it's the most relevant example, like 9-11 happened here in the United States um, yeah. and that became, that's a thing now. Like, yeah. you cannot get through September the 11th in this country. And even then only parts of September the 11th, we remember the yeah. Twin Towers. But yes. the Pentagon got hit that day as well. I was and just yes, about to uh, say that because I live in the DC area and I remember my mother coming to pick me up early from um from school because she works in worked in a government building and she was like, Yeah, they sent us home, so get in the car. 
yeah, fair. And like, yeah, like Penta- the Pentagon thing, maybe also because it got completely rebuilt, like nothing ever happened. It was minor. Like, with the other minor? Two, the, the it was minor in comparison. Were, yeah, they were like huge and huge. They dominated yeah. the New York skyline. Uh, the replacement is the biggest building as well. And there mm-hmm. were more civilian deaths. Well, that's why. Yeah. That's the most famous one. And then on place two, you have the one that was going for either Congress or the White House. That got taken down. There you have the story of the heroic people, or well, mm-hmm. there, there are probably some conspiracy theories about that, but like the the heroic people that took it down. We do not have time to get into conspiracy theories around nine eleven. Well, we do have the time, but you might lose your mind. Yeah, like something with jet beams and steel, metal beams and jet engines. Yeah, Some like, people are like, "Well, the Pentagon one didn't happen because it got repaired so quickly." It's like, do you not know how construction works? Yeah. I what I heard with the plane that um, got taken down was like that there was a rumor that it was shut down to prevent it from crashing somewhere else, which seems unlikely. But we would have heard about it if they'd shot down a plane that was headed to do anything negative. Like that would yeah, be major. Also, news. how do you know that's the plane that's going to do it? Like in that w- that case, you can shoot down an entire fleet. Because yeah, I don't like the way that one's it. flying. Yeah. Yeah. It is interesting yeah, like, what what becomes part of the, culture, the not the cultural like day to day landscape. Like when I say nine eleven, I don't have to contextualize it. I don't have to be yeah. When the plane hit the thing, I say nine eleven. Everyone, ah, you and say not even, not even only in America. You even yeah, here. Like I am thousands of miles away from where you are. Uh huh. But even we know. Oh yeah, nine eleven. That's the thing. You know, it's the same way as if someone says you know Auschwitz. You know, it's like you don't need to contextualize yeah. for me. I know what that is. And I'm aware of it. You know. Titanic. Funny. Got it. Yeah, funny thing is, I have a friend that was born on that day, like on 9 11, 2001. Yeah, the exact day. Your four friend. Yeah. That's I mean, like having a... that's like having your birthday on on negative Christmas. Well, true. But to be fair, it is less of a thing here. Like, we won't go in also uh, valid. that. And, well, she was literally just born when it happened. So I don't think it impacted her memories most, but it was like, oh. Oh, so you're born dead. It's kind of like how Melvina Dean was the youngest survivor from Titanic. She was like six weeks old or something when she was rescued. And it's like, I don't, I think she even spoke out about it multiple times during her life. She passed away recently where she was like, yeah, I don't remember anything. I was an infant. Yeah. An infant, people. Yeah. Like, uh, I don't know how it goes for her, but like my first memory was my fourth birthday where I got like a cake and a big yellow Lego truck. So I could, I could have, yeah. So I could have saved the world for all I know when I was between one and three. <laughs> and just if I know. go back in the, the head, like as if I was born, like the moment the well, Mike movie, as it were, started playing was the moment. Boom! I got that truck. That's when yep. the, the real here starts catching on for me again. That's like if it would be the movie from my perspective. It's like the opening scene. Boom! Happy fourth birthday. Yeah. I what? Why not a three years? I think so mine would open up in the hospital in 1991 I had open heart surgery I was there and this is we didn't have you know we were talking about tech before I clicked the uh the record button so you know this is pre on demand pre kids tv this is VHS's and like Jerry Springer and the news and also for people at home who are younger than this the tv ended at a certain point like the broadcast day ended there yeah. was an end to the day. Yeah, and and then I was you a... either got, I'm not sure of how it goes in America, but uh-huh. uh, here you either got like Telcel, that's like you uh, buy this toaster for mm-hmm. something, something. Infomercials. Was... Yeah, or um, the weather. certain channels for uh, an audience above a certain. <laughs> we did have those, but we also had the weather. But anyway, my earliest memory would click in in that hospital because I was absolutely furious to find out that my mother had loaned out my VHS copy of The Little Mermaid to another little girl in the ward because she is a nice person and I am not. Also, was... what... also you could lead the weather forecast into one of those movies. What's the weather like? Wet. <laughs> and you know what else is wet? The Little Mermaid! Wee! Yeah, I, I mean, I've watched that show first, Me whether than uh, questionable movies. Integrated then, uh, weather. I would spend that night. Sounds fun. I, I would love integrated weather. Like, if Netflix had a feature where it could, like, attune your weather to the show you're watching. I was, I've was i been watching the new, um, they made a show about Wednesday Adams from the Adams Family, so I've started yeah, I watching. That. 
Yeah, and it's pretty gothy. So it'd be kind of funny if, you know, in between episodes two and three, it was like, hey, do you want to know your weather? It's just as likely to rain as you are to bleed. Here's episode <laughs> three. And it would be like, that's great. Thank you. Well, I'm <laughs> like, the biggest Wednesday fan. Like, I, I, I watch relative few things because, like, the bass mm-hmm. guitar takes up all my time and writing and all that stuff. Good for you. Yeah, I mean, it's a fun hobby. And, uh, no, no, it I, is. That wasn't sarcastic. It's like, no, that's yeah. a, probably a much better thing to do, which is what I do, than watching Wednesday while I mean, on being on both, your phone. Both is fun to do. Uh, <laughs> One's productive. in that way a good thing to spend, but I probably am more likely to impress a girl with my bass guitar than with Netflix. Okay, that's both. fair. So, but, um, like, I don't watch a lot. Of, I haven't watched that show yet. I might, but... Um, I don't know okay. much about Wednesday Adams, but neither I do I. Who knows that um, her parents, Morticia and Gomez. Thank you. Uh, I fucking adore their relationship. Same. Oh, I do that's, too. That's too cool. I have to say too that again, I I did not, you know, I I my my father's from India and my mom, you know, she grew up in the United States, but was not, you know, her her father is from the Philippines, so you know, non traditional backup. Um, growing up so I didn't grow up with the Adams Family I've never seen the movie I've never seen the original TV show and I've never read the comics so I went into this show completely blind to it Um, you don't need to have seen any of it I get some of the references like I know the theme song you know do 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 snap snap I'm like I know that so there's a few allusions to things that even I can pick up on because they're cultural but as you pointed out their relationship And it also parallels to something I've talked about on the show a little bit with Jack and Rose is that their relationship is not one that's traditionally covered in media, but as you pointed out, it is a much better form of goals. These are people who are in love with each other, not, you know, in some sort of weird psychotic codependency, like if you leave me, I'll die, but they love each other because they love each other. And that's, I would make a difference there between Morticia and, uh, Gomez and sure. Jack Rose. To be fair, when Rose left Jack, he did die, so there's one difference. That's very true. <laughs> but I would argue that um, Morticia and Gomez, because it goes longer, it's a more yes. healthy relationship. Like, Absolutely. Jack and Rose could have been that, but well, we don't know, because after they, it, yes. they three, they... Uh, right. I think we're... It, uh, to glorify um, something that hasn't yet reached potential, like um, a lot of the <laughs> rock, for instance, they still play into the safeties. Like with Mozart, Levy played into a safeties. Well, he did a good, but like, but guess you see them. This is our third retirement tour. Blah, blah, blah. Right. And then you go, uh, yeah, you're a bunch of old men now. Just go to bed. Go for sleep. instance. Whereas with Nirvana, for instance, or in with um, that Zeppelin, you can't have that because uh, they aren't around anymore. Like the drummer died from that Zeppelin, I believe. And but you never want to get to Nirvana because Kurt dies. Yeah. You don't know if Kurt would have been the, held in the same reference because right. uh, he, he's dead. It's but true. With Morticia and Gomez, you, I guess the difference with Jack and Rose, it could have been great. But there is no guarantee. For all you know, maybe they would separate in three months. You it's don't true. know. What I, I was going to bring up, though, wasn't necessarily the longevity, but it was the concept of not wanting to change the other. Like at yeah. point, and at no point in, you know, Morticia and Gomez is where she's like, I wish you'd be more this. He's never like, I wish you'd be more this. It's always just, yeah. you are divine as you are. And I like that about Jack and Rose. You're right. It's only three days, but there's never a point where he was like, if you were a little less this, or if she was like, you know, if you just had more money, they're like, you are you. Yeah, Jack, it. More money would be a weird uh, demand oh, for him as well. But well yeah, like, yeah. like the, um, the other guy, I don't know. Uh, her uh, Cal. Cal. Billy Zane, the uh, the incomparable Billy Zane. Yeah. Oh, but Cal just try, try to make her this fancy yeah. lady and all that shit. Uh, yeah. Jack's yeah. like, ah, no, you're yeah. you, you and me. That's your, that, like, that's true. That's a way more healthy um, dynamic. And it's a pretty healthy dynamic. It just can't, it's just that it's Oh, they're children. They're, and, they're children. <laughs> it just doesn't send the test against a healthy relationship. For no, it it, it doesn't. Years. That's so more impressive. You're no, but you're definitely right, and, and you're uh, especially when you're looking at an actual like a real example, and not just oh, that's a cool trait. Gomez yeah. and Morticia are far more um, likely to be that. They are proven great. Example. Yes. 
Exactly. And and it is good to see that in a mainstream portrayal, like a, a functional married couple who isn't constantly joking about how much wine they need to stand each other and how wouldn't it be nice to just kick her in a ditch and get rid of her once and for all. It's like, ah. That's a fun thing because like I wrote, uh, I write fiction a bit as well as a hobby. Same. Also of the questionable kind, but that's beside the point. <laughs> but, um, I write about a certain fitness, like you've seen my email address, like it's based, that was the mail I uh, reached out to you with because, well, mm-hmm. it's strange on the internet, always a bit more caution, so by business mail in that case works better, but um, mm-hmm. villains, at least in the way I watch movies, they tend to have a more healthy relationship with their partners than um, heroes in that regard. Like or at least anti heroes. Like if like the sitcoms they are oh I have like my wife, my life I I hate sitcoms. Exactly. Like I hate my wife, I hate my life, I Yeah, something. that's the whole joke. Yeah, but like for instance with the films like with Gronk and Isma, even though it that ain't a romantic <laughs> relationship. That's a pretty healthy relationship. Uh, she's pretty abusive to Kronk. Be fair, Isma's a pretty awful friend to Kronk. She's not even a friend to him. I mean Kind of, but on the other hand, she does accept him as he is. But that might also be my uh, preferences. Well, I think it's often a more honest relationship. Like, she doesn't pretend that she likes him. There's no point in time where she's yeah. like, oh, yeah, we're best friends. She doesn't lie to him. She's like, you're yeah. my henchman, and I need you to get on board with that. Yeah. But in she had the animated show, there they worked together a lot as well. Yeah. And, but to be fair, maybe he's my abuse Kronk a bit, but on the other hand, Kronk does crush her with a metal with like a huge uh, statue when he pulls the lever. So it's more like maybe she... No, he drops her into a crocodile pit. Uh, that's that's one, but like they had, they had like a show on Disney. Oh, I didn't see that. So when, uh, Cusco goes to school to get his uh, <laughs> high school diploma because you can't be the emperor without the diploma. He's the emperor. Can't apparently. he just make that not a role? Yeah, apparently. Like it does okay. a lot of child kings, but like yeah dropping the crocodile but that's all that's also technically not um that is also technically abused like it's slapsticky like yeah, it was an accident um, like even if maybe it's a bit mentally abused i don't know but like it's a dynamic that works for the both of them mm-hmm. like they do respect each other as boss and henchmen it's a working relationship that works pretty well i don't know if i have time to push back on that but i do think that there is a little bit I see what you're saying in, I just, I'm going through like Disney villains in my head right now. I'm like, Yzma's pretty much beats up on him the entire time. Uh, Gaston's pretty awful to LeFou. Uh, yeah. Scar is terrible to the hyenas. But it, but it might also be, of course, I mean, my main example is Hook and Smee. Like, they kind of care for each other despite it. Like, it's, it's like, maybe, but that's kind of also made me might be my interpretation because like I said, I write a lot of fanfic about I've written mm-hmm. stories about it. so I'm not sure if it's the truth or that's it's just my interpretation of things like how you mentioned with the Titanic that they have like different um yep. memories of what happened. That way we interpret culture a different way as well. Mm-hmm. Perception and that again, like we said, people are people are weird. It's like everyone's perception is different. And yeah. sometimes it's about big ticket items like you turned the helm the wrong way. And yeah. sometimes it's about small ticket items. Like, I don't know if that animated hyena was being treated properly by union standards. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> But like, maybe like at least Scar doesn't pretend to care for it. Like, yeah, it's, it, know, it's like, that weird honesty where it's just like, he's not going around being like, yeah, we're, we're going to yeah. get married. Yeah, like it's, I don't know, like. It's a business I, relationship. Now the thing that I was, I can't, I'm not sure why I have the association that villains slash anti heroes tend to have a more healthy relationship, but I. I do have an association, but I'm not sure where it's from then. But like, probably maybe because the alternative is even worse with the "I hate my wife, I hate my life," blah, 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 blah. Which is such an annoying trope, and it's everywhere and constantly. It's just, and it continues to lead into people having like, "Oh yeah, well, it's totally normal to hate your spouse." It's like it, it's not though. You shouldn't hate your spouse. You shouldn't resent them. You should be with someone you care about. But for some reason, we've tricked ourselves into thinking that. Like, I think it is insane. Excuse me. Yeah. I think it is absolutely insane. That in 2022, people are still buying cake toppers where it's like the bride hauling the groom off to the wedding, or like he's got a ball and chain on his ankle. It's like, what? Yeah. Like, really? You're not even married yet, and you're already being like, I can't wait. This sucks, man. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, and then even then, like, with the Harling off thing, at least you could frame it in some possible way. Like, I know, like, that sounds weird, but for instance, I'm pretty passive, I would say. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm pretty laid back, and I'm like, eh, you do your thing, I do my thing. So I wouldn't mind uh, someone uh, hauling me to the altar because, like, all right, you lead the way. I don't want to lead. You know what you need to do? Shit. Right. Show but the implication that. is that you're being pulled there against your will. Yeah, and true. that's like, the problem. Like, it's not like it's a joke. And also, I don't like that joke either. Like, if you're getting married, you should be participating in the planning, even if you don't care, because otherwise you're putting the burden on your on your fiancé to do the entire thing. And they're probably not that happy about it. Like, exactly you don't like have it. to be as involved, but at least pretend you care a little bit, because that otherwise it just says you don't care about your relationship. Which yeah, I know like, that sounds like we're getting super deep, but that's often what happens in these stupid sitcoms and rom coms. True. Like for instance, like I said, like I wouldn't mind it, but then it would be a consensual thing. Yeah. Like for instance, if I want someone in charge, I'm like, all right, that's the thing you work for. Like anything can like almost anything can be positive if it's agreed upon, but with the little sitcoms both aren't happy. Yeah. Like for instance with uh, Morticia you could say that she's more like with uh don't, she says like don't torch don't torture yourself. That's my job. I could say torture is bad, but in that case, it's what they want. Mm-hmm. So yeah, like I mean, can, it's all about the dynamic of your relationship. Like, if you guys yeah. know each other really well and you're okay with, like, teasing and joking and ribbing and everything, then it's fine. But if you don't yeah. and you just start laying into somebody, that's going to be really cruel to them. Yeah. Or indeed, like, if they don't want to, like, if, or if you, like, in case my laid back, if you both are laid back and it doesn't work like that, then you push one to do in a position that it wants. Like, that's the important part, like, pushing each other in a direction where you both are happy and working towards something yeah. better. Exactly. And, you know, like, we already said that, you know, Jack and Rose and Titanic didn't, you know, it was, about, it was, it, it was like three days in the same way that Romeo and Julia was only a few days. You can't make a whole lot of predictions about a relationship. And I know you haven't seen the film, but what but, I did but, like, especially but, a movie being made in 97 and, you know, I'm a woman, I'm a girl that was growing up at the time I was, you know, eight and was going into the aughts. And in the 2000s, a lot of the movies that were made that targeted young girls and women were the she's all that she's the man 10 things I hate about you. Um, All those movies where the plot line is a a girl goes through a makeover to impress a guy and to have a big blockbuster movie made in 1997 where the woman doesn't do any changing. The only yeah. thing she does is realizing stuff about herself where she's like, ooh, I suddenly find that fun. It's not like she changed her personality. She just broke out of her shell a little bit. And yeah. it was refreshing in that way because she, neither she nor the person she was interested in were attempting to change each other. She doesn't want to change for him and he doesn't want her to change for him. And that's a really refreshing dynamic to see because it's not common. True. Yeah, it's interesting in the way you want. But like, for instance, this, this day we are, as a world, we are getting more and more progressive, more equal like feminism and shit like women can do anything a man can do and all that stuff slowly but surely but, yeah slowly but surely and there's still a long way to go but mm-hmm. we are getting there um but for instance like th- these days it's completely normal that a woman wants to work and do her career but going back to the films um in 1995 mm-hmm. was a live action Greta movie and there was the quote to anita when she says i want to marry someone and go home and all that stuff like you have talent don't squander it and more women have been lost to marriage than war famine death and disease Mm -hmm. all very progressive talking points but because the world wasn't progressive then they were set by the villain cruella yeah it's interesting to see how culture in that changes as well like what 20 years ago was like something only a woman wearing dead dogs would say was now a very good and progressive standpoint yeah, it was an edgy statement. So yeah. edgy that they had to make a villain say it. Like, no, we can't yeah. have a hero say this absolutely true thing. Well, they could, but, or more likely, they want to discourage the statement by having a well, woman even say it. Well, yeah, that is a very different point, too, because that just goes into the whole, like, uh, yeah. patriarchy. Yeah, that way associated with that. Exactly. Oh, we associate, you know, women being independent with bad people who kill puppies. Like, uh, great, thanks. Yeah. Well, Mike, thank you so much for putting up with the technical issues, me being sick, you being sick, the world falling down almost 73 times, but finally yeah. making this happen. I mean, like, with the, all the build-up with the cursed interview, like, at one point I was afraid it would never happen. I'm just, I'm glad it's done as well. 
No, I, mean, I, I lived up to the expectation. Like before we start, I was like, "Holy shit, how am I gonna fill an hour?" Because I don't know that much about Titanic. I like it. But it's a very yeah. casual interest. It is, and you know, the whole thing is that for me, like we discussed, why it, it holds to this day is because the people that were involved, and for me, what makes the legacy most uh, most telling to me is knowing about the people that are involved in the community now. And it's like. You you have an interest in Titanic and so do I, but they're not 100% of our personalities and finding out, you know, having that discussion about why myths are interesting and why music is important kind of helps to right. understand like why that movie landed the way that it did. So you like, don't need to know everything exactly, to like, get it. Like you, you probably, uh, I'm not sure yet because I still need to watch the rest, but like you probably already <laughs> have had on some experts about this, I think. I have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and what they have to say, I'm sure if I'm going to put it on, it's fucking interesting, but... Yeah, like the way that's it's so funny how Titanic is on. Like you have the professionals who live it, but it's just mm -hmm. just a cultural thing, and that's how yeah. our thing went. Because basically, what we did is just discussing cultural stuff. Yep. No, you're exactly right. And the last note I'm going to leave this on is I had an interview with him, but I think you particularly would really like the book he wrote. Um, it's by Stephen Beal. The book is called Down with the Old Canoe, and the subtitle is A Cultural History of the Titanic Disaster. So it's all oh. about the culture surrounding. Um, his name is Stephen Beal, S-T-E-V-E-N, and the last name is B-I-E-L. I did an interview with him a while ago. Super, super nice guy. Really smart. But yeah, the reason I wanted to talk to him was specifically because, you know, I wanted to look at the impact of everything that happened around it. The book's not not about Titanic, but it's mostly about the, you know, what happened afterwards and how everyone around it responded. Oh, so it's all books. It's a really cool book. I recommend it for any 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 Titanic fan. It's a super cool read. Yeah. Awesome. yeah I mean, I like history, so uh, yeah, I'm gonna, good. Uh, I'm gonna try to remember it. It's uh, <laughs> oh, fair it's enough. Only, oh shit! It's only eight bucks. Oh, nice. Well, thank you so much for bearing with me, Mike, and for for coming on the show. It was really fun to talk to you. I agree. It was very fun. So uh, yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah. And uh, with that, the curse interview is done. <laughs> oh my gosh, the curse is lifted. At least it gives you a good title. The curse interview. Oh, I like that. See? The curse is broken. Thank you, Mike, for bearing with me. Um, yeah, that, oh my gosh, this has been almost a full year of trying to schedule an interview and him being sick, my being sick, then being busy and ugh, just wow. But it finally happened. It was done. It was fun and it was amazing. And if you want to get in touch with Mike, you should follow him on his Instagram. That is Instagram.com slash mblome.ajax. And to spell that out, because of course I'll do that for you. It is M-B-L-O-E-M dot a j a x on instagram you should also be sure to follow me the show on all the things and get in touch with me leave me a rating and a review on your podcasting platform that helps me so 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 much and i'll see you guys in the next time bye